I went to uh, the Vector Arena and I was sitting in front of this guy and he had a great big uh, sign up, the Dylan Boucher Fan Club. I turned to him and said, well, what do you want to be a fan club of this guy? I said, he can't even put the free throw in. He said, mate, he is the glue. <laughs> Welcome, glue. How are you? I'm good. Sticky as ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Judd, our chances. How good? Well, they're as good as ever. I mean, we're rolling at the moment, and um, you know, we're uh, we're a team that's got a lot of the nucleus back, and so, yeah, we're looking good. Yeah, yeah, and and it's been a terrific year, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. I mean, you look at our record, and it's it's nearly identical to what it was last year. So, you know, as far as on a par, we're we're right there. But you know, we we're probably even more confident this year uh, than what we were last year, and, and obviously that comes from having success last year. So, like Judd said, we've got the nucleus of the team back. Um, added a few crucial pieces, and uh, we're feeling good right now. Well, the guy that you work for, the coach, made the coach of the year. Amazing, the Australians are giving one trophy at least to us because they're not good at handing them out. What has made Andre so successful? Yeah, I think uh, his willingness to learn and his willingness to be uh, have an open uh, open run team. Like he's he's definitely the man at the top and the head of the helm and. You know, he runs the ship, but uh, he will listen to everybody's opinion. He'll, he's open to suggestions. You know, he'll talk to his players and, and listen and care for them, um, as well as his management staff and coaching staff. And so he, he enables to give everybody a chance to offer their advice and, and to have their peace. So uh, I think what's really made him over the last few years is just that that guy that's able to uh, build a culture yep. and just empower everybody to, to have their peace and, and, and uh, create that environment. I know nothing about your sport, as you're well aware, but I did think that Tab Baldwin would get the job originally. And I'm told by other people that from a viewpoint of building up for a year, and you've been coached by them both, that there is a big difference and that this guy is much more suited to the league system. Yeah, absolutely. Tab's, a, I guess, a, a motivator. A motivator absolutely. for a big occasion. Absolutely. Yeah. He's yeah. all about, you know, the, I guess you'd call it the American rah-rah, you know, yep. get your hype for a game. And he was very good on the international circuit of being able to pump us up for an international game and or for a tournament, in fact, you know. But um, I think for a long period of time, because Tab, Tab runs his team as, uh, with it for use of a better word, a dictatorship. You know, he's a he's very dictator. Just the opposite to what absolutely, uh, so. absolutely. Yeah. Whereas Andre is all about learning and listening yeah. to his players and his coaches, and um, you know that's the biggest difference between those two. You've been tied up with this club for a while, so you've seen players come through, and one of the real thrills about it is that local talent is being used, no more so than Abercrombie. Tell me about the first time you saw him and what you thought. Well, the first time I saw. Tom was uh, <clears throat> probably going back when he was still at Westlake um, Boys High School. And uh, the boy could jump, obviously. He was yep. uh, very athletic and, and there was, you know, upside to his, to his basketball game. And, uh, you know, he, then he went and had his um, experience over in the United States at college level. And probably, you know, didn't go too well for him and his experience, um, you know, he talked about it being a learning curve, but for the reasons of whatever, the coach didn't play him as much as what he thought he was going to play, and he ended up making the decision to come back home. Yes. And, uh, you know, it was, when you talk to Thomas about that, I think that was probably one of the low points of his career, but, you know, you got to full credit to him to go ahead and turn that, that basketball career around because, you know, what he's now, first team All-Star 5, one of the top players in this, this league. This was, what, a couple of nights ago? A couple or of nights night? ago, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, you know, so... He's, he's definitely come on leaps and bounds and uh, he's more than just an athletic, athletic player. He's somebody that can contribute in a number of ways, defensively, offensively. His game has just grown, geez, in the last three years or so to being to where he is right now. So, you know, he takes all the credit for that. Um, and, and what a story it is, you know, somebody that sort of got rejected in a way from a team from yeah. college experience and now really found his feet here and, and developed into this marquee player. And the other guy who got picked in the uh, top five team, Cedric Jackson. I would have thought it was Cedric, but Cedric, the Yanks do things differently. <laughs> Mate, he's exciting, isn't he? Oh, he's, I mean, as far as we can see, and he's the best player in the league right now. You know, yeah. he is um, the, the oil, I guess, for this um, machine that we're running right now. He's, he's at the helm. He's the point guard. He runs the show, and he does it so well. He's Not only can he score himself and create things himself, he's, he makes everyone around him better, and that's what makes him so special.
spends a lot of time on his backside. But the games <laughs> I go to, I can't believe how much time he spends on the deck. Yeah, he uh, after games, uh, he's he's pretty beat up. You know, there's one guy you look at after a game and you know he's given us all. You know, he's usually got his you know head in his hands after a game and he's hurting and he's hurting bad. And because he's left nothing nothing else out there on the court, you know, he's like you say, he's diving in the stands. He's probably hit more corporate boxes than anyone else on the team. <laughs> yet he gets up and continues to play. He'll limp along for a little yeah. bit and then he'll just get going again. Well, talking about old bodies and people limping along, how are you going and uh, how much longer have you got? Um, I still feel good. You know, like I say, it's easy to ask me when we're winning. You know, I feel great when we're winning. Um, after a loss, I always feel a bit sore and a bit more tired, but um, I'm enjoying it too much to, to throw the towel in yet. I'm, you know, I'm feeling good and, you know, I, I feel like I've still got a lot to offer this team and, and, and basketball. So while I'm still enjoying it, I guess, uh, I guess I'll continue to be there. And as you did, see there, did doing you see some, that shot go in? Yeah, I, it's a pretty rare one. I've uh, probably struggling well, to find some I had to pay footage. overtime to get somebody to come in here for three days to go, to, to go through and find it. Absolutely. It would have taken them a little while, I imagine. What is your role? What is your job in that team? When the bloke behind me said, mate, he's the glue. And he was deadly serious. I said, yeah, I know, like that, you know. But I didn't have a clue what he was talking about. What is your role? Yeah, I guess my role is, um, is probably a, a senior a leadership-type role on the team. Um, I'm very vocal, um, as you've probably seen on the court, very vocal in the changing rooms. Um, I like to um, keep the levels high in the team. I'm, I'm sort of, I guess I demand the players to play at a certain energy level. And um, even at this age, I try and bring energy off the bench, and that's something mm. that I've always mm. been able to do is bring energy and try and change a game by doing things, not necessarily by scoring, but playing some good defence and diving on a loose ball, getting a steal, um, making a good screen for my teammates. I guess doing those little things that are so crucial, um, but sometimes they're overlooked. Well, we always know what he's going to do. The guy that I can't work out from time to time is Gary Wilkinson. But when I see him strutting like a peacock with his chest out, <laughs> I know that it's going to happen. Do you sit on the bench as the assistant coach and think, yep, he's going to be on tonight? Yeah, well, Gary is an emotional player. He plays with a lot of passion. Like, that's one thing he brings. And, uh, you know, that's kind of foreign for New Zealanders in this part of the world to see that. But, geez, he's got the crowd off their feet. He plays with emotion and... You know, when he's rolling like that, there's not much he can't do. Like he's, uh, you know, he's one of the toughest matchups for a big man in this league with his ability to shoot the ball from the perimeter, and then play inside close to the basket. So, uh, you know, he, he's a tough matchup problem, and you know, we're glad that he's on our side because when he's rolling like that, we all feel like we're rolling. You know, yeah, right, good every stuff. single player that walks on the court. Corletto, last saloon for him, I reckon, and he's grabbed the chance, hasn't he? Oh, absolutely. You know, he's a guy who's not wanted, I guess, by his former club for whatever crazy reason. And, you know, you see him shooting three-pointers here. He was, yeah. he was doing that against us all the time and hitting halfway shots and just a highly intelligent basketball player. Again, not the most gifted athletically, but knows how to put that ball on the hoop. And I tell you what, he's been great for us, especially when CJ was out with his injury with yeah. his knee. Daryl just stepped up like it was like it was just he anybody. Did, you know, like he just didn't even bother. Didn't didn't even miss a beat. Stepped into that starting five, yeah. and he's held his position in that starting five, and deservedly so. And he's been a revelation for us this season. And he's re-signed. Now to the guy that uh, I love watching play, Vakona. Number six he should be because he look he looks <laughs> like Kaino. He looks like him. He plays like him. Hell, he's tough, isn't he? Absolutely, and, and that probably helps in the way that he plays the game on the basketball court is like a number six. He's, uh, you know, the things he does, a lot like what Dylan does, uh, go unnoticed, but obviously he plays the game with, with a lot of passion too, and, you know, his energy, the, the output that he gives, I don't think there's a player in the world mm. that plays with that much energy, and uh, you know, we saw it last year in our semifinals against the Perth Wildcats, you know, where we're at without him, and when we got him back, and it was probably a, an inspirational story come back, but it was Mika like yeah. and uh, only him could do that and hobble around on one leg and still uh, pull us through. And, and I think, you know, he's, he's another big part of this team as far as the glue. Um, and, you know, he's, he's a leader and he's grown all the time and he's only going to get better too. Energy and inspiration and all those types of things. I know you get it at the North Shore Event Centre, but... It's sold out. Vector Arena, I've never had it. There are people buying seats that I don't reckon you could see anything from. 9,600 in there. Is that energy going to help the hometown, the home court 
I think so, and I, I, I tell you why. Cause, well, well, because Andrew Dewhurst will be there revving them up, mate. Absolutely. You know, he's, he's done a great job for us all season at the North Shore Event Centre and at Vector, but yeah. he's, he educates the crowd. He teaches yeah, them before does, the actually. game starts on what to cheer about, what not to. And I tell you what, we've got, you know, sort of 4,000 fans that have been packing in the North Shore Event Centre, and they're going to be there, and they're going to be showing the fans that it's first-timers, that this is how it's done, and hopefully they'll lead the way, and we'll be able to get 9,500 rocking in that place. It'd be great. Good stuff. How hard to go back to back because I remember the scenes from the last win and that's the expectation now. How hard to go back to back? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, this is obviously our first time we're going, putting ourselves into that situation. But, I mean, we, we said from day one, and this was obviously, obviously led by Andre, was that we weren't thinking of this as back to back. We were thinking of this with a new group, new team, and we were going ahead and trying to win another one. So last year was last year. Obviously, we, we come into this and teams are going to, you know, we're, we're the hunted right now. Teams are chasing us. But I think always being this side of the ditch, I think we, we kind of like that attitude. It's always something that we have as a plus and motivational side. We always like to feel as ourselves as being the underdogs, you know, as a New Zealand cross-town rival yeah. uh, with Australia. So I don't think there's any lack of motivation with this group. Uh, it's a new group, and as we've always said from day one, like we're going out to win another one, not defending anything this year. So you play the first one at Vector. The second one, you play at their place. And if you win that, that's it, isn't it? Absolutely. And you move on to the final. But if you drop that one, you come back to Vector. That's right. Yeah, and the same in the finals. Absolutely. We actually, it's funny, we, we've Big always... Big advantage, isn't it? Oh, huge advantage, huge advantage. For us as a team, we've, we've talked about it all year. We go one game at a time. We're only yeah, worried about yeah, this Vector yeah. game. We get this win, then we'll worry about Townsville. And as soon as you look too far ahead, um, the wheels will fall off. And that's, that's sort of a bit of a catch cry we've had all year, is uh, one game at a time. Well, we're proud of you. You've done brilliantly. It's a magnificent franchise. Guys, the very best of luck. Thanks, Murray. Thanks.